Welcome to the CrossFit Max Podcast. What is going on, everybody? We are stoked that you're here for another episode, or maybe it's your first time here. Then welcome. We got a fun episode for you guys today, and we're not going to do too big of an intro. So if you want to help support our channel, make sure you give us a rating and a review. We also have a Buy Me a Protein Shake link down below. And with that being said, let's get right into it. Oh, three, two, one. We're, we're in it. We're limited. What's up, guys? <laughs> Welcome <laughs> back to the podcast with Susie and Brandon. And, and we got a special guest today. We have Baby T. Little Thomas is literally in my arms right now as we are attempting to record this podcast. Which is our baby. So I am finally not pregnant. Yay! <laughs> Let's do quick banter topic on this. Yes. This whole podcast might be relatively quick, guys, so bear with us because we got to get this episode out to you guys by Wednesday, and, and Lil T is not uh, cooperating on this first out-of-house I mean, travel. The poor little thing is eight days old. Give him a break. He, we're oh. already putting him on the podcast. He's actually smiling right now, so if you guys hear that, those little noises, it's not from Susie or myself. It's, it's Thomas. Lil T making his first appearance. But yeah, so we had um, we had the baby. We had Thomas on Sunday, on Father's Day, actually Sunday, June sixteenth. Yeah, he was born at four thirty-seven p.m. p.m. and it was quite the ordeal, quite the experience, <laughs> quite a beautiful experience. It I'll was. add that it uh, was beautiful, but it was not what we expected. No, you tell them why. Well, um, we ended up having a C-section. Yep. Which was not part of the plan, and his little T's head was kind of his, his turned head to was the side. crooked, but also he was like sunny side up, so he was like facing the wrong way. Yeah, he's yeah. He wants you to. He wants to tell the story. <laughs> he's like, no, mom, you don't tell it good. <laughs> um. Anyways, he was upside like not upside down like breech, but he was like flipped and crooked, and we did everything we could for twenty four hours of labor. Yeah. Um. And after twenty four hours, we kind of. I could have kept trying to flip him, but exhaustion was real and there was no guarantee it was going to work. So in the end, we opted for a C-section. And within 30 minutes, he was out. Yeah. And it wasn't like stressful in terms of like he was, it wasn't an emergency. It was just like we kind of reached a crossroads where it was like, you weren't dilating do you anymore. want to get this baby out or not? Yeah, you kind of got stuck at about seven centimeters dilated and... That's kind of the sticking point. The nurses said usually it's around seven centimeters. You either keep going or you stop at seven and then you're kind of just, that's all it gets to. And the problem was is that it wasn't at seven centimeters and like he had moved position and things mm -hmm. were looking optimistic. He hadn't moved at all and things were looking like they were going to get worse because I was deteriorating. Yeah. So he came out by C-section, which was definitely not what i had planned mom was a trooper during that whole time that was definitely intense to yeah. experience but everything went super super well and we have a beautiful healthy baby boy so it's pretty handsome but we are extremely biased yeah and yeah so today is our first travel since we've gotten back from the hospital yeah car seats are hard because <laughs> <laughs> He is not settling right now, and I think that's just because he's um, a eight little, days old, a little, a little gassy right now too. Like, yeah. So if you but, hear uh, any toots on the podcast, yeah. it's not me or Brandon either. Yeah. This setup is incredible right now, though. Let's see how long my arm and shoulder can take this. Actually, not that bad on the table. I but. feel like we didn't plan for holding him during this whole episode, so we did not yeah. come equipped. We we're hoping he was going to chill, but he's not chill. So here we are, and. And yeah, so Lil Thomas, we the name comes from both my, your father yeah. and my grandfather. Your father's name is Thomas Al Thomas Alan, Alan Miller. Miller, but he goes by Alan. Uh, yeah, so he goes by Alan, but his legal name is Thomas Alan Miller. And my grandfather is Thomas Alan McDowell. Yeah. And this little guy's name is Thomas Alan McDowell. So it's super cute because he is named after two really important people in our lives and from both sides of the family so it's like a little generational name yep and so he's named after his papa and his great 
grandpa <laughs> <laughs> yeah so anyways very exciting the first week of parenthood has been actually super fun yeah he's been pretty good first couple nights were rough last couple nights he slept a lot oh he's getting whiny right now Anyways, we are going to do our best in this podcast like we have been doing our best for the last week at home with Lil T. Yeah, we're going to try to uh, carry over. I guess the topic for today is kind of inspired by my beautiful wife and what she went through. And she's postpartum, so she's an emotional gal. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But it also goes really well with crossfit it goes really well with any sort of fitness Fitness, sports any sort of sport um and yeah so and that's kind of like this will or this limit that is sometimes we place on ourselves we put on ourselves Yeah. yeah as humans we tend to think more on the i can't side rather than i can and humans are extremely adaptable and haven't really reached let's say a limit yet you know like yeah we're always and, breaking and, and new records I mean, yeah, exactly. or like, like, yeah humans are constantly breaking faster records lifting heavier, heavier weights, weights. Mm-hmm. and you know yeah, I don't know where I was going with this, but well, to quote me, <laughs> to quote Mean Girls, <laughs> the limit does not exist. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, it's also pretty incredible what you went through for ten months carrying this baby, yeah, and then you know going through your C-section and then having pretty intense surgery, and then and not, having to take care of a baby immediately post surgery, yeah. <laughs> and then not being able to like really move at all for mm. two days. Yeah. And then you started to get some function into your body. Yeah. And I mean, now you're able to get in a car, walk. It's pretty crazy. Yesterday we went for a walk around the block, seven days post surgery. Yep. Which is pretty crazy because for those guys who don't, those guys who don't know what a C section actually is, it's like they cut through your entire seven layers of (laughs) skin and tissue. Yeah. I mean, that's not that much skin. It's really just mostly your tissue. Like your muscle tissue. I'm just saying there's yeah. seven different layers that they have to cut through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But to like get to the baby. The intense surgery that you have to go through to get to this little beautiful guy. Yes. Is uh, pretty intense. And the fact that you're moving already, you're sitting up already, like you're on a couch sitting up, you're lying down in bed sitting up, you're, you went for a walk last night, you're going to be yeah. throwing a barbell around in a few weeks. Hopefully. Um, for now, I'm just throwing around our little... <laughs> eight pound bundle of joy yeah so i think where we can start with this is where people tend hmm, where people tend to like limit themselves let's say right because humans right now can potentially be that your potential can be limitless right? right and i think the beginning point of that really has to be your mindset yeah. Because if you believe you cannot do something, then, then, you're right. you, then you are right. You're correct. You're 100% right. And you are already setting a boundary on your potential. So, for example, right now I'm, I'm in the, the running mode, right? Yes, training for your first half marathon. Yep, I'm on week two. I'm killing it, especially as a dad. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, it's not easy. You're running on little sleep and poor recovery. Yeah, let's just say week one was rough. But um, yeah, like a lot of people, as we've started this run club, as I've been getting into the running, a lot of people tell me like, oh, yeah, like I just I can't run. I just don't enjoy it. And I think a lot of people tend to look at me as someone who is just this guy who loves to go out and run and go for jogs and and if Susie's kind of smiling right now because she knows that that couldn't be the couldn't be further from the truth when we met like I was not someone that enjoyed running 5k was the equivalent of running yeah that was like like a half marathon you know yeah like 5k was like whoa like I'm gonna go for 5k like that's a huge run for me right Um, now you eat 5k's for breakfast (laughs) exactly yeah (laughs) but there's like this belief that's that a lot of people tell me like oh yeah i just can't run and it's like oh really like you physically you have two legs? yeah like you physically don't have the capability of running or you just don't have the adaptation yet 
and you haven't gone to actually run out there because running how is, much time have you spent trying to run yeah because running is pretty darn tough on your muscles your joints your cardiovascular system your mind your mind exactly and unless you actually go out and and do it yeah. you're, n you're not going to get better at it but no you can't just uh, take a magic pill and become a runner overnight yeah exactly yeah. but what you have to do is you have to start really really small you have yeah. to start with interval running you have to start with runs Walk. and walks you have to go at slow paces you have to let your tissues adapt to the impact of running right. and that's pretty much what i'm doing on a on a maybe moderate level right now is that you know i ran 5k today very easily i ran six um two six k's last week and to me breathing was not an issue at all my cardiovascular system is probably one of the best it's ever been in my entire life at least that's I how it feels right now you. but like my joints just ache my achilles my ankle my hips you right. know like those things start to ache and far less now than they did a couple months ago before we started the run club mm -hmm. but <clears throat> You got to get out there and you got to allow your system to go through that. And for some people, like it's not even going to be about the impact of running. It's just going to be about the breathing. So if you just tell yourself like, oh, I'm not a runner. I can't run. I can't do this. Well, you're going to be right. Yeah. But if you change your mindset to this belief of, you know what? Like, let me try. Yeah. I can one day become a runner. Yeah. And like, what are the things within my control? Like, what can I do? What steps can I take in order to achieve whatever running level and in this example that we might want? Mm -hmm. And 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 we're talking Bite about sizes, we're talking pieces. we're talking about running, but a lot of people that's just going to the gym. Right. You know, CrossFit. CrossFit's way too intense for me. I cannot do CrossFit. I cannot lift weights. Right. I can't lift heavy weights. You know, it's like, well intensity is relative right for you seeing someone lift 115 pounds might look impossible and maybe right now that might not be possible for you to lift but maybe if you start with an empty barbell and you start to do some light weight training mm. and you start to build on that <laughs> always laughing right now and you start to build on that, right? And then eventually that 35 pound empty bar becomes 45, becomes 55. And next thing you know, you're building up to something that's heavy. But if you tell yourself, oh, I can't do that, or lifting weights is not something that's good for me, then you're right. Yeah, and I think this also applies, you know, we're in our new parent era right now. And I think um, this sort of mindset of being like limitless also doesn't apply to just like physical attributes. Mm -hmm. It applies to like scheduling. For example, you technically have the best excuse in the book this week to be like, oh, I can't get my workouts in. Mm -hmm. I can't I can't go to the gym. I can't go running. I my wife just had a baby and a, and a C-section like I couldn't possibly put myself in the list of priorities like mm -hmm. but actually there's a way to figure it out we've organized friends and stuff to come over my sister Auntie was Hannah. my sister was here for the week and so she would come and then brandon would seize that opportunity to go out for like his 30 minute jog or whatever mm -hmm. go to the gym do an hour workout yep are you yawning again? I'm yawning, but now I'm yawning Some because I'm, a, <laughs> I'm not pregnant, but <laughs> I don't sleep. Yeah. Yeah. But the point being is that you could you could have easily taken that this past week completely off your training, mm -hmm. and nobody would have judged you or batted an eye about it. Mm -hmm. But there's just you have to decide what's what's a priority to you, and for you being limitless is like fi figuring out a way to make sure mm -hmm. maybe it looks different you didn't have like a normal training schedule but like you Definitely still got out there and you still, still got two runs two crossfit trainings in last week four sessions in in a week yeah considering we got back from the hospital on, on like tuesday, tuesday night mm -hmm. so wednesday to saturday i worked out different times different recoveries different intensity different intensities for sure. for sure starting a new running program 16 weeks out from half marathon right which to me like if you would have told me i was going to do a half marathon five years ago 
I would have been like, no, no way am I right. going to do that, you know? But I've decided that, like, this is something that I would like to achieve. And, you know, even now I'm saying, like, the half marathon, but maybe one day I'll want to run a full marathon. I'm not sure how it's going to go. Um, I think it w- would be cool to one day, like, check off that that what box. What is it, less than 1% of the world has run a marathon <coughs> or something? Less than 1%, yeah. That's pretty cool. Just be I'm not, cool sh- I'm not sure if that's that. the actual stats, but if that Wait, is the I stats, you want to fact check that? I'm fact checking myself, but yeah, the point what being... Is that, what is the Joe Rogan? Oh, Jamie. Jamie, check that up. <laughs> Hopefully some I people got that right. I don't listen to Joe Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> Only the biggest um, podcast ever. I don't listen to him either, but... Um, but yeah, so all this to say that it begins with your mindset less and than one of the u.s population has completed a full marathon less than one percent of the u.s population so i would say like probably it's probably about the same for canada approximately also. 0.01 percent of the world's population so that's one percent zero point zero point zero one percent of oh, the global worse. population oh wow less than one percent of the american population so Damn. basically you're like in a very elite category yeah I'm in that category, by the way. I just want to shout myself out right now. <laughs> yeah. There was a lot. And kind of bringing it back to like CrossFit itself. Right. There was a the, the thing that I like about CrossFit is that you are challenged on a daily basis. Every single day you're going to walk in and you're going to do something that is hard. And at the beginning. Maybe walking in the gym is the hard thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And. Yeah, you're going to tell people, you're going to tell your friends and your family, yeah, I'm going to CrossFit today. And they're going to be like, oh, what? You're going to CrossFit? I could never do that. I could never do that. Um, so, yeah, like Susan said, getting into the gym is going to be really, really hard at first. But the fact that you're going to challenge your belief system right. every single day that you're in the gym until you realize that, hey, like, why? There's going to be this, like, little sw- switch that goes on in your brain. Like, why don't I believe in myself? Why? What I can do that workout in 10 minutes. I can do kipping pull-ups today. Yeah. I can do push-ups on my toes. I can lift that weight. Right. I can hit a PR today if I give it my all and I believe in myself. Yeah. Right? I think so much of all the things that we do as human beings is what happens between the years. Mm-hmm. The and story that we tell ourselves about who we are and what we're capable of. Yeah, and and just going to say this one little thing here, but there's on Facebook, um, was it this week or last week, there was someone who I used to do CrossFit with many, many years ago, maybe seven, eight years ago, and she put up a post on Facebook. I won't say her name just for privacy, but she put up a post saying uh, she reshared a memory of her doing a Spartan race, Mm. And she was like, oh, like these were the good times. I don't think I'll ever get back to that stage. Mm. And then saying like that she was 40 pounds heavier now and everything. And I just commented saying, hey, we're here when you're ready. You know, like if you don't believe that you're ever going to get back to that fitness level again, you're going to be right. Yeah, correct. But, But if you believe and you trust the process, not only will you get back to that level, but you can actually be better than what you were one day yeah and i think there's this quote that i loved i'm not sure if i've said this on the podcast before but i saw a video of annie thor's daughter a long long time ago on youtube and annie thor's daughter won the crossfit games like a long time ago and she's still killing it i think she has like a i think she's she just had a baby again she just had her second baby i think and she's Mm -hmm. still she was in the CrossFit Games after she already gave birth to her first one. Yeah. I Huge remember. inspiration. If you guys know anything about high-level CrossFit athletes, everybody know who Annie Thor's daughter is. Anyways, I saw a video of her like long time ago on YouTube, and she won the CrossFit Games. And then I think the year after or two years after, she broke her back. And she was telling the story that the doctor said, you'll never be back at 100%. And she said good i don't want to be at 100 percent. i want to be at 110 percent wow you just gave me goosebumps and ever since i saw that video i was that was a big mind shift for me because i was like you know what like that was that was a powerful saying that you can listen to this doctor and you could say hey i'm never going to get at 100 percent again or you can switch that and say good 
I don't want to be at 100%. I want to be at 110% yeah. of what I was. I want to be better than what I was before. And I think, you know, this kind of works well in your situation. You know, I've told you this before yeah. that, you know, like this reco- <laughs> <laughs> this recovery piece for you is going to be quite challenging. And yeah. Lil T and myself and even Max are going to be here for you. But I mean, <laughs> there, there's all these hormones that are going on while you're in your final weeks of pregnancy that you're like, Me? I'm, Hormonal? Ne- I'm never going to no. get, I'm never going to have my body back. Yes, like, I know. I'm just going to be big forever. But, you know, I obviously know that. And Susie's can't see her right now, but Susie's actually like very lean already. And it's, Thank or- you for it's, saying that. it's only been eight days since, you know, she's delivered this little guy which my arm's getting tired right now. <laughs> yeah. It's actually passed out, which is good. I haven't, uh, <clears throat> and I haven't been able to do much. Like yeah. I did one kilometer of walking in the last eight days. Yeah. And although breastfeeding is like a workout, let me tell you. Mm-hmm. And like I've told you, it's like, all right, like in, I haven't said this to you, but in my head I've said, you know, like that's, that's good. Like we're not going to get you back to hundred percent. We're going to get you fitter than what you were before, you know? Yeah. And all the and training. I do, I'm excited. Like the thought of coming back to the gym and, having goals i have the hunger you know mm-hmm. like i'm yeah. i'm excited to like get on the pull-up bar which i haven't touched in like six months or whatever yeah or more nine months yeah and that and just taken away from all this it's like you know for all of you guys listening i'm sure almost all of you have some goal in mind or maybe you have like you have this goal that you've set for yourself but then there's like this other goal that you you think about, but, but you, you never don't say it out loud. But you don't say it out loud oh because God, you so true. because you because be- you believe that it's not possible. Yeah. Right? Like for example, this half marathon for me was uh, a time of like thinking like I don't know if I'm ever really going to be able to do that, um, and then I just said, all right, like screw it, let's just do it. A lot of you guys ran the half marathon last year. It motivated me, so I said, okay, all these people can do it why why can't i yeah i should be able to if i put in the training then i should be able to do a half marathon and maybe right now my goal in the back of my mind is to potentially run a marathon one day who knows maybe i'll do it maybe i won't but i know that we can train as a family (laughs) i'm so excited (laughs) i know that i have the capability to train and do a marathon one day i'm not saying that you know this isn't saying like Hey, you're limitless right now. You can go run a half, uh, run a marathon right now, no, or you can go hit a PR. Yeah. But if you open your mind and say, "If I train towards something, and I believe in myself, and I put in the I put in the time and effort required, exactly, yeah. I can do anything that I set my mind to. I can go get that new uh, promotion at work. Yeah. I can study and pass this exam." I can hit this lift. I can run this run. I can train this way. I can, I can birth this baby. <laughs> I can birth this baby. I, I can lose 20 pounds. I can get to a weight that I was 20 years ago that I never thought I would be able to reach again. Thousand percent. So all that to be said, humans have the capabilities it's just what goes on between your ears that yeah. really limits and puts boundaries on what you can and cannot do. I'm trying to remember the quote that's written on the cup that you gave me for Mother's Day, but I feel like it is so relevant right now. Oh, shoot. I don't remember. It's like everything I need is already oh, within yeah. me or something. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. And it's running got me this super cute cup for my not quite first Mother's Day because I was mm-hmm. pregnant. And the mug says on it something along the lines of everything i need is Sweet. already then within me yeah because it was cute because at yeah. the time i was I pregnant was, i wasn't gonna get you a coffee cup because someone had a, your mom had got my mom one. gave me one yeah yeah and i was like okay, i'm not gonna get her a coffee cup but then when i saw that coffee cup i was like oh this is perfect gift for her yeah because i was literally pregnant with our son so he was like yeah. physically within me already mm-hmm. but i feel like that quote kind of fits on this discussion and I drink from that cup every day, so I get to look at it every day. You'd think oh, I would yeah. know how to quote it properly, but <laughs> anyways, here we are, baby brain. Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel like that applies in this situation. Like everything that you need to accomplish, whatever it is in life that you want to accomplish, opening a CrossFit gym, for example, it's within you. Mm-hmm. You just have to open your mind to that possibility. Yep. And until you open your mind to that possibility and 
And every time you tell yourself that you can't do something, you are a self-fulfilling prophecy. You will be correct. So you decide. Boom. Mic drop. Let's end it right there. We can't really do a client of the week, though, because we don't. We weren't here all week. But we can do something really fun as a tribute to two, two clients. clients. Oh. oh, baby T's in it here. He loves them, too. <laughs> These two people joined our gym more than a year ago, I February, <laughs> February of 2023. And this is unfortunately their last week at CrossFit Max because they are moving away for work purposes. They're leaving us and it's devastating. <laughs> and that is Kathleen and Fred. Woo! Shout out Kathleen and Fred. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> These two have been really awesome. Legends. Not just athletes, but incredible humans. We were extremely lucky to have them, not just as members of the gym, but also close friends of ours. And neighbors. And neighbors. And... They always brought a good, well, Fred always brought a nice little goofiness to the groups. Kathleen always brought a nice, beautiful smile and encouragement I've to everyone. I've never met a person more positive than Kathleen. Yeah. Like, I aspired to have her level of positivity. Both of them brought an incredible energy to the groups. They were really, really fun to coach. And we're going to be very sad that they're going to be moving. They're not moving too far, but just we'll far get, enough. We'll get visits, but they're moving... About an hour like and a half away. An hour and a half away. So it's a little bit of a commute to come work out yeah. at CrossFit Max. We'll, st- we'll still see them as like little drop-ins here and there as they've promised. But we uh, we appreciate you guys. We love you so much. And we're excited we're for our last week with a you. A little CrossFit Max hole in our heart when you guys leave. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. So thanks. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. I only cried three times. <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to go back and count. I think it was more than that. But um, we appreciate each and every one of you guys. Thank you for bearing with us while little T was napping. I'm kind of relieved he didn't tune on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. would have been hard to explain. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if you guys want to help support us, there's a buy me a protein shake in the links below. We would greatly appreciate it. Baby if T you would haven't, love that. If you haven't yet, give us a rating and a review. It helps get our message out to so many more people around the world, which is pretty cool because it's getting to different countries and different people are listening. Yeah. And um, we'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya. Bye.